I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. This is an overview of the vSphere 7 with Kubernetes network service, focusing on the supervisor cluster. The first network service provider is NSX, and the environment has an initial setup with an ESXi cluster containing three hosts managed by vCenter. I've created a version 7 vSphere distributed switch, or VDS, the vCenter management network has the NSX universal appliance connected to it. The transport network will carry the encapsulated NSX traffic, while the edge network is the uplink to networks outside of NSX. Let's look at this in vCenter. Our VDS has the three port groups I just described. Also notice that I'm only using two uplinks. With NSX 3.0, segments will be attached directly to this switch and no longer need a separate opaque switch with its own uplinks. Using NSX Manager, ESXi nodes are configured as transport nodes connected through our vSphere distributed switch. They are then added to a transport zone. Edge VMs are deployed onto the management network. They are also connected to the transport network for overlay traffic and the uplink network for traffic outside of the NSX overlay. It is not a requirement to deploy the edges on hosts in the transport zone, but if you do, the transport and uplink networks must be on different VLANs. Enabling the supervisor Kubernetes cluster on your vSphere cluster involves creating the control plane VMs attaching them to the management network and an NSX controller VM segment that is created by the vSphere network service. The subnet IP range comes from the pod CIDR defined at cluster enablement. The management network is used for vCenter to interact with the cluster. The Kubernetes agent called the Spherelet is deployed to each ESXi host, making them Kubernetes worker nodes and forming the supervisor Kubernetes cluster. A load balancer is created in NSX to balance traffic to the Kubernetes API across the three supervisor control plane VMs. The IP for the load balancer comes from the ingress network range that you define at cluster deployment. Each of the system namespaces in the cluster gets its own NSX segment. We are going to enable the supervisor cluster and focus specifically on the networking details. Remember that the control plane nodes will be connected to the management network and the workload network. The workload network is the NSX overlay. For the workload network, we select our distributed switch and the NSX edge cluster. Pod and service ciders are the IPs that are internal to the supervisor cluster. They are not routed outside of the cluster. The ingress cider IPs provide access into the cluster, both for access to the Kubernetes API and for load balancer type services. Since the pods and service IPs are not routed outside the cluster, external communication happens through NAT each namespace that is created gets an SNAT rule with an IP assigned from the egress CIDR. We choose our storage and start the enablement process. The namespace resource pool and supervisor cluster control plane VMs are now created. Port groups are created on the VDS for each system namespace in the cluster, and an additional port group was created for the supervisor control plane VMs. As we move into NSX Manager and visualize the networks, we see that a corresponding NSX segment was created for each of those VDS port groups, and that each segment is assigned an IP range from the pod CIDR. So any pods or VMs connected to that segment get an IP from that range. The supervisor control plane VMs are connected to a VM domain segment. Two load balancers were created. The first handles ingress into the Kubernetes API and to load balancer type services. 
the load balancer IP came from the ingress CIDR we defined earlier. The other load balancer handles east-west traffic within the cluster. Kubernetes services are a grouping of pods and provide load balancing and service discovery. All of the services are plumbed to this load balancer and get an IP from the service CIDR we defined in the cluster enablement process. In the case of the cluster service, traffic is routed between the cluster interfaces on the supervisor control plane VMs for access to the Kubernetes API. When the VI admin creates a namespace for the DevOps team, it also gets its own NSX segment with distributed firewall rules that deny traffic to or from the namespace by default. Developers can enable granular access through the use of Kubernetes network policy integration with the vSphere network service. Let's see this in action. We create a namespace called banking. We'll configure user access to the namespace and associate a storage policy with it. Back in NSX Manager, we see the banking segment and the subnet that all banking pods will be connected to. The vSphere network service also created a NAT rule to translate any IP from a pod in the banking namespace to an IP from the egress CIDR defined earlier. Any traffic headed out of the cluster will have that IP as its source. The DevOps team has access to the namespace and deploys a set of pods with a load balancer type service. The pods are attached to the banking segment and get an IP from the range assigned to that segment. A new virtual server is created on the load balancer with an IP from the ingress CIDR to provide access from outside the cluster. And of course, any new namespaces would also get their own segment. Let's deploy some pods and a load balancer type service. We see the pods quickly come up in vCenter and that the load balancer has been assigned an ingress IP. Back into NSX Manager, our banking segment now has ports associated with our three pods. And our load balancer has been assigned a new virtual server with the ingress IP we saw with kubectl. Automated network integration with the network service in vSphere 7 with Kubernetes. Thank you.